camera rolling. What's up? The real Mr. Homicide. We're right here filming behind the scenes of a higher power. Get ready. This shit's gonna be dope as fuck, homie. That's all I gotta say. So I made this film, which it turned into a movement. I've been lucky to have the support from my people, my followers, my fans for I mean, all these years. And they continue to support me in everything I do. You guys might know me for being a revolutionary activist, rapper, actor. I guess now you'll know me as a producer too, so you could add that to the list. The music eventually led to, you know I mean, the acting. It opened up different avenues. And um, I'm just, you know what I mean, I'm blessed to be where I'm at today. And to be a youngster, to still be in my 20s, and doing something like this is just, you know what I mean, it's amazing. So, I'm just enjoying the ride. Microphone, like that. Everyone set. Movie Higher Power. Homies chilling. You know what's up. Getting ready for the scene. Yeah, yeah let's shoot this. Yeah. Doing our own thing here, homie. You know what's up. Big Rich G. Let everyone know. What's up, man? Mr. Homicide right here, making it all happen right here. And right here with Rich and Scar and the homie right here looking at protecting us. Yep. Right there, you know, maybe make sure the cops stayed off our back. <laughs> yeah. We're cool, we're cool. Yeah, we good, man. Right, Set life. Of, all right. The creator, producer, the writer, the director, the whole project, the real Mr. Homicide. My boy's just on another level. What can I say? I'm proud of the little homie. Okay, pues. Al rato. I was tired of Hollywood painting a certain type of picture about my people. You know what I mean? Always showing the bad and never the good. So a lot of people like to talk about it, but I like to be about it. So that's why I... Uh, I put my money where my mouth was. I made this movie, this movement, and um, it uh, it started something great. Yo, what's up? It's the real Mr. Homicide right here. High power, dark afterlife, reality cinema with the homie Crooks. He's worked on everything from Netflix, HBO, Nike, Warner Brothers. But this is where I want to be. Higher power, my boy. That's right. That's so animal. I see the support from the raza, from the people, and it's real humbling. Um, to you know, see uh, the support that I get from around the world and uh, people, you know what I mean? Not even just from my raza, but from everybody, from all different cultures, different races, religions, everybody. This movie's based on true events. So, you know what I mean? A lot of the events that are in the story are things that I've experienced personally myself. So true events, but a fictional storyline. So I took a bunch of things that happened to me personally and put them in this movie. A lot of things that I took from my personal life uh, real life experiences and um, just put it to a badass dope ass storyline so in real life you know let's say you have a, a riot or a shootout or a fight all these things are separate you know what I mean they uh, they happen months weeks years apart they have nothing to do with each other but you know what I mean for the movie's sake I made it look like all these things were happening back to back to back for more action and entertainment for the movie this is Pete Vasquez Yes, uh, if you like my work, I'm Manuel Salazar. If you don't, I'm Panchito Gomez. And if you don't like Panchito Gomez, then you might like Peter Vasquez or Angel Salazar. We're doing a movie called The Higher Power, written, directed, and produced by a young man named Mr. Homicide. Be sure to tune in when it comes out. This shit is going to be bad fucking ass. And we did a great job tonight, man. Yes, sir. You right? The real Mr. Homicide. Thank you for my brothers. Gracias. Appreciate your support. It's crazy to be in this movie, being the star, the main person of the film, and my co-stars are people I used to watch and I used to look up to. Life is a crazy roller coaster, you know what I mean? So, um, from going, like I said, out of crazy ass life, you know what I mean? Growing up, a lot of fights, riots, shootouts, stab outs, like whatever you guys wanna call it. Um, moved to Oregon, Portland, was homeless, came back, was on the breaking news, um, locked up, fucking, you know what I mean? Just from all these different things, situations that I've been in to be here today, to turn my life around like that, that's uh, something that inspired me too. I wanted to show that there is a different way out. No matter how far you are deep into this shit, you can make it out. Cause Hollywood never likes to show that. They like to portray our people as, you know what I mean? A certain type of way, you know what I mean? They like to, if you watch the movies, pay, pay close attention. Not all of them, but most of them, 
they like to portray the cholos as like stupid, dumb. At the end of every gangster movie, people are either dead or back in jail. Make us look bad, like that's all we are. You know what I mean? In this movie, we're gonna show the truth, the reality. Like homies are gonna stand tall. We got brown, beautiful women representing. Um, it's a badass movie, you know what I mean? We're on set. Got Santana from American Me. So got the homie right here, Crooks doing his thing. Got the, you know what I mean, the badass Ramfla over there. A higher power. You guys know where we're at? Right there where they got the tattoo. Santana just gave me mine. Pachuco shit. <laughs> Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys for supporting. Thank you guys. Get ready for a higher power. And um, just want to thank you guys for always being there, supporting me, and um, going along this journey with me. It's crazy, you know what I mean? Just making this film, it's uh, connecting me with a lot of different people. Uh, a lot of great people. Once you guys see this, you'll see all the hard work we put into it. Right here behind the scenes of a higher power, the real Mr. Homicide, right here in East LA. Stay tuned. You guys won't be disappointed. This is gonna be a badass movie, straight up. This isn't no big ass major Hollywood movie with a big ass budget, but this is the Rasa getting together from people from all different backgrounds, different races, religions getting together, making this shit happen. You know what I mean? Majority Rasa, but also people from other communities as well. So this is a, it's also about unity. Cause that's a, you guys see me with the music and now with the acting, I'm always trying to unite. I'm always trying to you know, be a positive voice for my people. And um, if everything goes as well, like, uh, I hope it will. I hope this platform will uh, open up a new avenue and I want to get into politics. You know what I mean? Maybe run for an office, president, something like that. If we get enough sales with this movie, Hollywood's going to see it, recognize it, and they're going to say, you know what? We got to make more movies for the Rasa, for the people. We got to start making movies for them because this is what the people want to see. We got to show them with our, you know what I mean, our numbers, our power, that um, I mean, we want to be represented. We want to see movies for us. Um, we're, we're the main characters, you know what I mean? Show the truth, not not all this fake ass bullshit making us look bad, represent us right. So support this, you know what I mean? Buy, don't just buy one copy, buy two, three copies, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know what I mean? Just um, let everybody know about it, tell them to go buy it, and uh, just share the word, let everybody know that it's coming. Yeah, it's crazy, it's, it's, you know, people recognize you at times, especially the people out in the street, and you know, it's Hispanic, white, brown, whatever. And my kids used to tell me, oh, bye, you know, you're famous, and this and that, right now. So one time I was at this concert. So I was with my best friend, Orlando Cepeda Jr. His father was a classic fucking, the best Puerto Rican baseball player aside from, from Roberto Clemente. So he takes me to this concert, it's Jethro Tull. I don't know if a lot of you people know who it is. I didn't know who the fuck he was. I just knew it was music, and I'm a musician, like the real Mr. Homicide. You know, we take music and we deal with it, whether it's good or bad, whether it's rock or whatever. So anyway, to make a long story short, um, excuse me, but at the Universal Amphitheater, and I told Orlando, I said, Bobby, I gotta go to the bathroom, bro. And he goes, yeah, do your shit. And I'm sitting at the pit, and I'm watching Death of Tall, and they smoking weed, and everybody getting fucked up, and this is like the early 90s. So I go to the bathroom, and I walk all the fucking way up, because I'm in the bottom, VIP shit, right? So I go up there, and then I, I go in, and there's nobody in the bathroom, but just two black dudes. I ain't racist shit. I grew up with brothers. I'm Puerto Rican, pero también, you know, me crié en, en Los Angeles. So yo tengo, yo tengo hermanos chicanos and whatnot. So I got a bathroom, like, all right, cool. So, you know, we're in three stalls. And, you know, everybody whipping their shit out, doing their shit. Nobody can see that. And all of a sudden, I turn around, and I see this chubby black dude. And listen, man, he's got a Raider hat. And I go, what's up, man? Yo, American me, right? And then I turn around and look, I said, oh shit, that's Ice Cube. I said, what up, Cube? He said, what's up, man? He was Santana, right? I go, yes, but it's Panchito. He said, nigga. He goes, nigga. And I said, what? I said, oh shit, first California motherfucker, they call me a nigga, because I'm from New York, and we call each other niggas. I tell yo, my man, yo, you, you guys, I'm really proud of you. You did a really good job in Boys in the Hood, man. He goes, man, fuck Boys in the Hood. Y'all motherfuckers rock that shit. That American me shit, boy, that's some sick stuff, bro. So who's next to him? Fucking Pac. Pac turns around, God bless him, I love both of them motherfuckers. But Pac turns around, he goes, oh hell no, oh hell no, hell no, you kill that white boy, you did what you had to do. I'm like, this motherfucker. From that moment on, Cube, Pac, and I became really good friends. I didn't know Pac. I knew Cube, kinda, cause I'm, I'm old school rock steady. It's a break. 
So I knew Q because of, you know, Ice-T, the Rocksteady crew, and all that other bullshit. But Pac, I didn't know about. But Orlando was friends with Pac. So I come back down. I said, yo, nigga, I was in the bathroom, papi. And then I'm, I'm speaking Spanish in Puerto Rican Spanish. I go, yo estaba con este tipo. And I'll do, I'll do it in Chicano too later. So I go, yo estaba con este tipo. Y eran dos morenos en el baño. And he goes, papi, pero que es lo que pasó? I go, Ice Cube y, y tú, papi, get the fuck out of here. So basically, in Chicano goes, Homie, I was with two, two my actors in the bathroom, and one was Cube and the other one was fucking Pac. And Pac was just coming up. He was good. He was bad. You know? He, it was, I think, after Digital Underground. So come to find out, they were big fans of mine. Pac, and then, you know, we, we hung out for a minute. You know, I did my little thing back then. You know, I don't do it anymore. I probably take that. But we hung out for a minute, and then they went their way. I went my way, and about a month later, I ran into him at, um, I ran into Pac in San Francisco. I went out there to do a show called Nash Bridges. And I was there for like a week or so. And we to some restaurant, some random restaurant. And he was sitting there with some people. And he recognized me again. He goes, what's up, man? What's up, man? What do you call me? He goes, American Mean. He goes, what up, American Mean? I said, what's up, Pac? And from that time on, we became kind of good friends. You know, we exchanged numbers. Back then, there were no cell phones. It was just beepers and, and two-way pages and shit. And that was it. But it was cool, man, because I was like, all right, man, I don't recognize you. And he goes, so then my friend Steve Wilcox, who plays young JD, did a movie with him called, um, I don't know, but it was, uh, it was, uh, it was Pac and, and Jim Belushi. And they would play cops. So Steve Wilcox, who played young JD, worked on the movie. So Pac turns around and tells him, and I found this out later, he was, oh, shit, you the white boy in American Meat. And JD, and JD, and Steve Wilcox, was, yes, sir. He was, fuck, man, that's one of my favorite all-time motherfucking movies. He said, you guys can rock that movie. And, he, and then he told Steve that he had met me in a bathroom taking a piss. So Steve goes, well, that's a good way of meeting somebody in a fucking John taking a leak. So he told him, he goes, yo, can you get in touch with Pines? Because I had moved back to New York. And um, I had lost contact with these guys. So he says, yo, get in touch with Pines and let's see if maybe, you know, I'm shooting a video in New York. That's when he was doing this video with uh, with Dre. It was California Love. They were doing this um, post-apocalyptic thing and... um. He wanted Steve and I to do, you know, like a little appearance, the same type of thing, but, you know, like Cholo type, except because he had the brothers on one side, he had, you know, um, I don't know if he had some Asians in there, I can't remember. I think, um, I think, what's his name, God bless his soul too, Shock G was in there. So um, they, they asked us to come in, but unfortunately, you know, we didn't get a chance to, and then after that, you know, the good Lord took him, but um, yeah, man, it was, um, we think a, lot of, a lot of the good ones have gone, man, and it's unfortunate because, you know, sometimes we're victim to, to, to what happens on the streets. So this is why we need to back each other up and do positive things as opposed to negative. And it goes to show that, you know, us all being of different races, we gotta support each other in one way or the other. If we're gonna be doing films that are positive toward whatever communities, whether it's a black community, Hispanic community, Asian community, we all gotta like, you know, back each other up in a sense, not be like, oh, all right, cause they did a black movie, oh, they did a Chicano movie, they did a Chinese, no, 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 no. It's, everything is one big melting pot. And in order for all of us minorities to succeed, in Hollywood, then we gotta back ourselves up, back each other up. You know, there's a lot of Latino projects that one dude talking all this shit over here and the other guy's talking all this shit there, but when they're together, they talk the good shit. So there's a lot of, you know, stuff, not only with us, but that happens with with anybody. But um, as long as we stay together, man, you know, this project's gonna be awesome because Homicide got some good people coming on, um, you know, and we're still in the process of getting, you know, stuff together. But with, with everybody's backup, with everybody's help, this could be gold. At the end of the day, I'm very happy to be part of this project that I'm doing with the real Mr. Homicide, who I am going to 100% support. And if any of my fellow peers that have a certain amount of juice, whatever, feel free to jump in. You know, if there's something there for you, it's there for you. And if not, we make it happen. Mr. Homicide, I wish you nothing but the best, brother. You know, we familia and it is what it is. Young blood's forever. La primera lives. So I went and auditioned for uh, Blood In, Blood Out. For Taylor. I went and auditioned for Taylor Hackford and um, uh, Jimmy Santiago Vaca. He, he wrote it. Actually, you know, Blood In, Blood Out, America, me, from what I understand, was one movie to begin with. But they had certain disagreements. They split up. One was American Me and one was Blood In, Blood Out. So I read and they had me do some scenes with Damien, with um, Miklo, and uh, it was it came out, it was good. And then, so I booked it. And we had rehearsals for about three weeks. 
we were we rehearsed with Benjamin Brad, Jesse Borrego, and um, we were they hadn't hired uh, Montana yet, so they brought in actors that they worked off of us during scenes, and uh, it ended up being Kiki. Uh, Kiki's a firme vato, and um, so I booked that. I signed a memo deal. Everything was set. Then my agent said uh, they want to see you for uh, American Me, uh, Universal. So I told my, I said, look, I'm already uh, uh, obligated where we signed, you know. With, they go, well, just go kick and meet, you know, meet some people. So I said, all right, cool. So I went to Universal, you know, on the back where they got the uh, the bungalows. Um, you know, right now I think back there, what is it, uh, DreamWorks? But anyway, uh, who was it? I think Bob Maronis was uh, casting. Yeah, it was Bob Maronis. And I knew Bob from a few other films back. And, um, so I went to meet, you know, just meet some more people. So I went and auditioned. Eddie almost wasn't there yet. So I just read for the for casting. They filmed it. And um, so I left, said thanks, gracias, later. And um, so I read, uh, drove off the Universal lot. I think I went and had me a burger, went home. And back then, and when I, when I walked in, I was living in Hollywood back then. I was living on, uh, on Island in June, Friedman on the balcony at night, Hollywood lights up. It was pretty cool. But uh, anyway, so I walk in, and back then, you know, we had we had uh, our phones and message machines. We had pagers. I don't think the young, uh, generate, don't even know what a pager is. But anyway, so there was a message. So, you know, as soon as I left the audition, went and got a burger, came home, I walked in, there, there's a message, my agent. Hey, they want to see you, because you know, they taped it. Eddie almost wants to meet you. So I said, all right, I'll go because I want to meet people. So I went, as soon as I walked into the uh, offices, Bob Marone said, just go, you know, go ahead, walk in, go ahead. So one in, went in and I got offered, he said, this is your room. He offered me a role, one of the homies, one of the big homies. And um, I told him, I said, hey, uh, you know, thank you, gracias, but um, you know, I'm already uh, obli contractually obligated with uh, uh, blood in, blood out. One of the things that happened with American Me is when I, I received that script about a year before. I knew about the film because Al Pacino originally had the rights to it. He lost it at Universal. So Edward Olmos and um, Robert Young picked up the, the, what's it called, the option for it. So once they had the option, it was taking a while because he had to rewrite it and blah, blah, blah. So he sent me the script about a year before we started the movie. He said, read this. Um, and at that time, the young characters weren't in the script yet. The three young guys. So he goes, read this. Um, this you're, you're in this film. Don't sweat this. Because I got mad at him because I wanted to do Stand in the Liver. And he, he, he actually didn't want me to do it because he was waiting for, for American Me for me. Which was, I think, in the long run, probably the best thing to happen. But um, in the interim, I received a script from Taylor Hagford called Blood In, Blood Out. Actually, it was called Bound By Honor at the time. And I read it. I started reading it. And I got a message from someone that told me, yes, kick back with that because this, this, and that. I was like, all right. So when I when I talked to my agent, I said, the script for Blood and Blood, I was like this big. It was like the Bible. It was huge. So I started reading the thing, and I was like, all right, cool. And I just asked my agent, what do they want from me? Well, you know, so Taylor Hatchford called me personally. And we spoke, and he said, well, Panchito, any, role of, any, any of the roles you want here, it's yours. You pick one, and it's yours. Because I really want you in my movie. And I said, all right, cool. But then I got a call again after that um, from Universal and from Eddie Almost. And you know, I guess I could say this because some people, they told me, you know, there's a conflict of interest because I've already committed to do American Me for one. For two, the scripts were a little similar. So, you know, they, they had their own little legal thing in there with that. But at the end of the day, I think, I did, you know, the best thing that happened, I mean, not that I'm knocking blood in, blood out, because 99.9% .9 of the people that are in that film are good friends of mine to this day. You know, every one of them. So, you know, more power to them, but you know, it, it was what it was. I think I made the better decision, in a sense, for me. Because, you know, once they wrote the characters for the, for the three young one of us, the young ones of us, it made more sense. Because the story didn't have to go back to when, how the beginning of certain things, you know, the, the, the genesis of it, which is what worked out perfect for the movie. So, that's, you know, that's something that not too many people know, some of us know, and, um, it was good, you know, it is, it is what it is. It's a classic, you know, and hopefully right now with this project that we're going to do, it's it's a, the budget, of course, ain't what we have for American Me, but 
as a team in a group effort you know with certain actors that, that the homicide already has committed to this we could do something just as good if not I won't say better because nothing is better than anything but we could do something that's powerful and that could, that could generate more work for the raza and could generate more positive um, outcomes toward how street life is today even though you know you got to depict what really is happening out there you also got to see the positive side of it which is what we're working on so I think um, what is it uh, the same day I think we American me and blood in blood out they filmed, started filming the same day they flew out to uh, uh, Folsom and we flew out to Quinn but before they took it uh, we went to Quinn uh, they took us like a week or two ahead of time just go trip and and they got oh man you know they get, so all of them you know back then man nowadays the, there's a what is it a end of hostilities man I thank grace the thank thanks to God I hope that that last end of hostilities but like 25 oh, 20 something years ago it was on and cracking and Quinn and went to Quinn that's the north you know people don't know what's the, what's cracking but that's their facility, that's their uh, guidance center. So, but I'm there to do a home. I'm there, to, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not in, gonna get involved in all that drama. I'm there to do a movie, man. So they hit me up, but nobody else. For some reason, they were, where you from, where you from, they thought. And I told them, you know, I'm from Pacoima. And uh, I was born right there, and I was born in Little Canyon. Right now, there's a target there. But years ago, there were cantone houses. And one of those houses was, uh, was a doctor's office. Born right there, like an adult, like somebody hits me. Where you from? I'm, that's where I'm from. And they got, you know, all, hey, you know, they just they got pumped up, and they started. The guards had to tell homies, you know, kick back. And uh, the other actors, they trip, cause they don't, you know, you know what's happening. Back, you know how it is. The homies that know, uh, you know, real homies know what know what I'm talking about. But I told them, hey, you know, I'm here to do a highlight. You know, I ain't here disrespecting, low riding, trying to be crazy. I'm here, you know, I'm still a Chicano, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to disrespect anybody, I'm not going to get disrespected, you know, and they were, you know, they were feeling with that, they, you know, but there, you know, there's always knuckleheads, a couple of knuckleheads, but, you know, that's how it is, you know, anyway, we did it, we filmed, and, uh, you know, the movie came out, uh, uh, both films, you know, but America and me, they had some issues, man, like, I, I, I knew what was going to happen, and, um, that's why you know and but not the actors in America I mean they got nothing to do with just like the actors in uh in sangre por sangre you know we're we're actors man but um I don't need to remind everybody what happened with the uh, uh, American me and you were talking about deleted scenes there was a whole bunch there was one in particular that I, it was two of them one in particular I remember we did um I don't know if you guys remember, there's a scene where we get chased by the Hazard Gang and we go into this little restaurant where, where JD gets shot. So I'm behind a counter and they put this platform under a butt, you know, on the floor because of the camera angle, so it'll be higher. So I, it was like a Chinese restaurant in East LA and this dude had, um, they had a shit of uh, ducks hanging, like in, like in rails. <laughs> so I remember running in, the, when the first time we did this scene, I ran in, you know, because we jump in and then I realized, so I hit one of the rows of the ducks, and it shit scared the fuck out of me because I didn't know what the hell it was. It just I knew what they were, but it just creeped me the hell out. You know, I still had juice and everything, and the duck is in my face. Knocked them all down, and when they all fell one by one, they, they kept rolling because I don't need for whatever reason. So I turned around and said, "Oh my God, guys, check it out, Mundo, check it out, JD. Look, it's Huey, Dewey, and Louie. They are you know, the ducks." So unfortunately, they had to cut that out because you know, because of you know legal issues with with you know copyright issues so to speak but that was funny in the prison when we did um before the okay when i when santana gets molested raped um that was not in the original script it was actually supposed to be a big fight scene with the the, the white kid and myself and um that was a scene that was really good and they cut it out but we shot it, and it was like, you know, when, when Santana and Mundo go first get into the prison system at Juvenile Hall, that, you know, we walk out of the, 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 the check-in or whatever they call that, I forget what it is, but I'm uh, booking. So this is where we, I first encounter the Gauchito, and he's mopping the floor, and he's looking at me, and I give him a look, and 
he gives this weird smirk, like, you know, and that gives it off. But he goes, oh, I'll talk to you later. And I looked at him, well, let's talk now, I say. And the guard leaves, apparently, at that point, and we get into this big fight. And that's what's supposed to happen. The guy pulls out a shank, and I kill him. Well, as you already know, the outcome was different, a whole different scene. And another story we have when we did, um, I know a lot of people didn't know this, or maybe they did. The American Me was the first movie that was allowed in a regular state mandate prison. Not only the state prison, which was Folsom. Then, when we did the youngster stuff, when the kids, we shot in, the, in, in Juvenile Hall in downtown LA, UIA. That was nothing. There were only five of us real actors in the film. Uh, excuse me, four. Myself, Richard Coca, who played Mundo, Steve Wilcox, who was um, JD, and um, his name slips my mind now, forgive me. Don't get offended, but I'm the kid that played Big Happy. We're the only four actors in that movie. Everybody else that you see in there in Juvenile Hall were all wards of the state. Um, you know, since you're a minor, you're not allowed to show them on film and stuff, but they, their parents signed releases and the state signed releases. So what Universal did, was, which I think was the coolest thing they did, was they went ahead and made sure that every one of those inmates, and I think it was like maybe 2,000, 1,700 inmates, I believe, I'm not, my, my, my math might be wrong, but everyone was taken care of as far as money for their, for their food, their education, clothing if they needed it, so they were well taken care of. Whatever amount they gave for each of those kids, I don't know, but, you know, Universal had a lot of money back then. So that was one thing that was really positive. That's how Edward almost paid these kids. Or not Edward almost, I keep saying Edward almost because he produced it, but Universal, so to speak. So they made sure that these kids were taken care of. Um... We went back after that. We did some, you know, like workshops with them. They were really cool, and you know, unfortunately, some some are soldiers that you know don't want to go the right path, and you know, they stay in that. And, and what we used to say, you know, you know, you, you stay stuck is stupid, and that's messed up. But it is, you know, some people just that's it. But um, in any case, that was one of the crazy things too. And then you know, it was it was nuts because I was 28 years old playing 15. But I was amongst kids that were 14, 13, 15, 17. They were just as dangerous as the guys that were up in, in, in Folsom. And at Chino, because we shot at Chino as well. I remember one time when, when we, in the beginning of the film, we had gone to um, observe the three older actors. And I want to say it was, it was in Chino. It was in Chino. And we were shooting in a separate part of the prison for a moment. And all of a sudden, we see this guy getting rolled out like in a lunch cart it wasn't even an ambulance or or, or, or gurney or anything. it was you know a lunch truck or one of those you know carts where you deliver your library books or whatnot and it was weird because after that day I didn't want to go back again because you know I said well, see, I'll, I'll observe you guys later peace this guy's head it was crazy that's how bad it was and scary and it's true what we went through American me they had some hard things going on while we were filming as well well this dude's brain was hanging out like literally, it looked like hamburger. I was like, hell no! I mean, he got his ass beat. You know, I, I don't believe he made it, but they took him out like that, like nothing. You know, the CEO was like, you get out the way, bro. They shut the prison down. We had to stop shooting that day. We had just started. It was like seven, eight o'clock in the morning, and it was by the time it was like, yeah, it was about nine-ish. So there went a whole day of filming in that part of the prison. So we had to, they had to shoot elsewhere. But things like that, you know, there's a lot of experiences that went on through movies. And it's not only this movie. I'm pretty sure the guys at Blood In, Blood Out had a bunch of shit that went on as well. Same thing with Mi Vida Loca. When we did Mi Vida Loca, we, we got... I was sitting in the makeup room. Blah, 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 blah. We got shot up at 3 in the morning. You know, shit like that. Echo Park and Silver Lake and whoever else, you know, whatever their crews were, weren't getting along at the time. Dangerous stuff. But that's the reality of when you do a film that, that makes... Um, that wants to depict what... Unfortunately, our, our urban lives are, you know, and it's not only us, it's, it's, it's America, period. So this is why movies like this are made to show positivity, but unfortunately, things like that happen. So, you know, and you, you, they could have been doing the love boat or, you know, the grown-ups and some shit happened. You never know. That's just the way things is. But we're going to have fun. We're going to do this and we're going to do it the right way. Yeah, back when we were doing uh, filming Blood In, Blood Out, it was pretty crazy because, um, Inside the pinta, we, you know, some kind of drama always kicks off. So I don't know how many times uh, we had to stop in the middle of the scenes, and um, because the buzzer goes off throughout the whole pinta, and because some some drama just somebody just got stuck or some pill you know, happened, you know, and um, uh, 
we had to stop scenes. The gates automatically start closing, you know, so they could separate the population. And um, and then even uh, the actor, we had to wear uh, yellow vests because the towers, you know, the gun towers, you know, they when some some kind of drama kicks off out in the yard, you know, they see yellow, but they know not to start blasting on on the, on the yellow vest, you know. But um, yeah, it was kind of kind of crazy, but it was you know pretty freedom experience. What's up, everybody? My name is Arthur, also known as Shadow from the classic movie Mi Vida Loca, Mi Vida Loca from 1992. Just giving a big shout out, let you know I'm working with Mr. Homicide on a movie called Higher Power. Stay tuned for the details. Hi, my name is Christina Solis. I played Baby Doll in the movie Mi Vida Loca. You might also recognize me from Married with Children or um, Out for Justice. Um, and we're here representing for the youngsters and um, just so proud to be part of this. Thank you. What's up, everybody? It's your original homegirl stranger from Echo Park, also known for Mi Vida Loca. I'm working with um, the real Mr. Homicide on a Higher Power. You guys, you guys got to check this movie out. You know, he pitched it to me. I sat on it for a day, and I was like, I'm rolling with it. And ever since then, it's been one after another, one after another. He's been blessed with amazing actors. You guys stay tuned for what's coming next. Hi, my name is Gabriel Gonzalez. I play Lil CP in Mi Vida Loca, and it's a real pleasure to be a part of this production. I want to congratulate Mr. Homicide, Familia, support Latino Productions. There's another crazy story. After we did American Mean, Blood and Blood Out was still filming. They had to do redo, they had to reshoot because they had some, I don't know what their problems were, but everything was said and done with. So we're, we're in this place called um, a looping stage, which is what, um, once the film is being edited, before the music and all that shit, um, if something was hindering the, you know, whatever was shot, and it's the best scene that you did, but a car came by at the time and they didn't catch it then, so we had to redub over that. So basically, like lip sync to what you're doing. So it's, <laughs> it's funny as shit because it turns out we're in this in this sound stage, and down the hall, they were doing the looping for Blood In Blood Out. So a bunch of the actors were doing their shit over there and some of us were doing shit on this side. So room A and room B. So when Edward almost found out, Universal found out, they said they put a block to it because the people from Blood In Blood Out wanted to pop into our stage to see what we were doing and to get a glimpse of the movie. That was the thing. Everything was like private. You know, nobody was able to see our movie until we did and the producers. So they were the rival movie, so to speak. You know, we, they, we were battling like like Rocksteady and the New York City Breakers. Pap, I got you, bro. Pap, you got that one. So I remember Raymond Cruz and um, and uh, Jesse Borrego was, she, she was there. And, you know, we had lunch together. I'm like, pa, 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 because we were my boys. So Jesse goes, yeah, let me go say hi to Eddie. So I told Eddie, oh, Jesse Borrego, goes, keep that motherfucker outside. <laughs> I started cracking up. I said, what's wrong? And they called security. They had security stop, you know, block any of those guys from coming into our stage but eddie came out and they talked and everything it was fine but it was funny because it was like you know it's like a little gang battle for for two movies which is basically what happened you know and you know we they both came out around the same time i think we came i think we were released prior before that but um like i said earlier it was a great movie and you know but it, it was funny because he's just, like, stupid shit like that it goes on sometimes you know it's like rivalry but it was not a bad rivalry but it was just that's who it was man yeah, so we had, I remember they, they had the, you know, the, was it Universal? I can't remember what stage it was. But he had called security and they just like had five guys just standing in front of the stage. And we all had to have a special passes, even though they knew who we were. Like the American Me people had to have their own little badges to get in. The Blood In Blood Out people, you know, they actually told them to, do, to, to, um, to schedule different days. We had the upper hand because, you know, we had a bigger budget. So they, we were able to muscle them and say, no, you can't come on these days because we own this studio those days you come to you know whenever we're not here so that's how they finally got fixed in the mix but yeah man it's crazy shit yeah so you know we're doing other films right now i'm working on with the mr real mr homicide we're doing a higher power and people got to check this out because we're doing it on you know hollywood don't give the raza a whole lot of love and i'm not just talking about chicanos mexicanos i'm talking about all raza from the los estados unidos from the united states to mexico guatemala nicaragua uh, El Salvador, Colombia, Peru, all the way to Ar Argentina, uh, Cuba, uh, Puerto Rico. I mean, all of, you know, we don't get a, a, a whole lot of love. You know, Hollywood straight out disrespects and excludes us from any kind of film, TV, and I, I'm tired of it, man. Hats off to Steven Spielberg. He just did a, a West Side Story. 
Hey, gracias. Look at how beautiful and talented my Puerto Ricans are, man. My Cubans, my, my, all rats, I'm telling you, we're, we're excluded, so know where you stand in this country. And you know what, I wouldn't even care, because I expect that from Hollywood. You know, I expect, because you know what, but what eats at my heart and that what eats at my gut is the, are the thousands, the thousands of Chicano, Mexicanos that have given up their lives fighting for the, in this country's wars, you know, and for what? So future raza like them, meaning us, can be singled out for blatant racism and discrimination from industries like the racist Hollywood film industry, you know, um, that's what eats at my gut. Otherwise, I could care less. And not, you know, just raza, know where you stand in this country. And brown on brown violence, man. It doesn't make any sense. I'm advocating awareness and education to all our youngsters. It's a beautiful day out here. But yeah, so, the real Mr. Homicide, man, he wrote himself a kick-ass script. It's called A Higher Power. We're still doing, we're still working on principal uh, shooting. Um, and we got some good, we got some solid actors in this. You gotta check it out. Support Raza Films. You know, on the surface, the film industry appears to be like an innocuous industry. But the, ne the nefarious nature of this industry is self-evident. It's right there in front of you. Oh, turn on your TV, 24-7, cable, network. You see up when you do you when are we there? Net we're not. Any films that are out, where are we? We don't exist. You know. Stop giving these people your money. Stop watching these films. If you don't see yourself represented in to even commercials, you gotta remember those actors in the commercials, boring commercials, they're making some especially national commercial nationals, and it's on heavy rotation. These actors may work one, two days, make 50, 60 grand, you know. If you don't see yourself represented in these commercials and these TV programs and these films, stop giving these people your money. Because, you know, the streets of LA, they get cold at night. You learn a lot of things. You learn how to fight. Singing the blues, smoking those cools. You know I don't jive when it comes to that life. I don't need no whiskey. I don't need no wine, cause life is just fine when I slam that main line. Yeah, so like, and when we were doing, uh, when we were filming Blood In, Blood Out, you know, the other actors, they tripped on what kind of what happened, you know, cause they, they kind of tripped because we're on front, you know. There's one for the puto that played Carlos. Even like 20 something years later, would they had like a reunion or something? Yeah, nobody contacted me, good, feed me, I don't care. But this fool even brings up when it's time for him to tie, he says, so one of the actors threatened my life. A little, hey, you know what? That's why I'm glad I'm working like on this, on this, the real Mr. On real Mr. Homicide, a higher power, no hyenas on this film, you know? It's like, um, back then you gotta understand, I, I might probably, back when we were filming, I was still young. I had a couple years, you know, sobriety, clean and sober, you know? I still have my attitudes and, and, uh, and I probably did, you know, cause he was a, yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to keep it positive, <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, 20 some years later, that fool brings that up. So uh, anyway, but yeah, this a uh, higher power. You guys check it out because this feed it's gonna be. We got some solid people. Angel, uh, uh, Chi Chi, Scarface, Santana, from American Me, some kick-ass actors, ones. And now uh, I did my issue. Oh, by the way, I want to say. I want to say hi to my little baby baby daughter, Destiny Apollonia. She's my little sweetheart. Hi, Destiny. Daddy loves you, baby. So, um, man, you gotta see her. I don't know if any of you seen her paintings, man. She's like, she's already been off. She's so good. She's been offered from universities, man. And she keeps, as long as her grades stay up and it's time for her to graduate, she has full scholarships, two universities already. And she's got meetings with other ones. But, um, hi, baby. Destiny, my little angel. The real Mr. Homicide, you gotta stay in touch with the little homie. He's just on another level, man, I'm telling you. Clean and sober and he thinks about all kinds. I mean, it's a higher power. Help support our film. Gracias. Hello everybody, I am actor Angel Salazar from the movie Scarface, Chichi, Chichi Get the Yeo. 
Remember the, I died at the end of the movie, man. Tony opened that door, opened the fucking door, and I get shot again the door. But I survived. Tony Montana survived too. And I'm doing a movie right now called The Higher Power with my homeboy, Homicide. It's going to be a great fucking movie. And next week, I think he's on the schedule. Tony Montana is going to be there next week. Matter of fact, go to Instagram, Homicide page, and ask him what day Tony Montana is going to be filming. Okay? Ciao. I'm Bree, and I came to play Chicha's girlfriend by accident because I was late or whatever. Um, I was supposed to play Chivo's girlfriend, and now I am here with the great Chivo. Yeah, okay. Uh, she's supposed to play Chivo's girlfriend, but because you were late, the other girl ended up playing Chivo's girlfriend, mm -hmm. and you played my girlfriend. Yeah, but uh, I think it worked out. It worked out. Not a bad deal. <laughs> so here I am playing, playing Cheech in a film called Higher Power, right? Uh, higher power by uh by Mr. Hum the real Mr. Homicide. The real homicide. The only guy that I know that's been banned from Instagram like ten times. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know he, he got banned from yeah. from Instagram. Now uh, most people know me as Chichi from Scarface, but what they don't know is that I done other movies before Scarface, Boulevard Nights, Boulevard Nights, right? Uh, I did also Walk Proud with Pepe Serna playing the, uh, uh, the Chicano gang leader in a movie called Walk Proud where Robbie Benson, white kid with blue eyes, playing a Mexican. So uh, they, they show the movie in a private screening in Mr. Lane and when he said to the girl, Robbie Benson, why, why you don't like me? It's because I'm Chicano and the audience start laughing and they thought it was a comedy. So, Universal Studio never released it. It went to straight to video. Wow. Yeah. And another thing is this. Oh, here comes the best part. Mm. In the movie Walk Proud, we shooting in Venice. There was a real Mexican gang, Chicano gang called 11th Street. Mm -hmm. 11th Street gang. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so at that time, there was the other gang movies came out called The Warriors. The Warriors. And there was fight among gangs inside mm -hmm. the movie theater. So the producer decided, to change the name of the gang. Instead of Living Street, Los Aztecas. Los Aztecas, right? So when the, the gang members or the real Living Street were there actually watching the film, and Pepe said, Los Aztecas, they got mad. They went up to the police and said, Yo, man, you changed the name of a gang, Vato. <laughs> it, was, it was funny, it was hysterical. Yeah. Was there any fights or anything behind the scenes that went on? Well, when we're shooting Boulevard Nights and Woody and Boulevard, mm -hmm. In, in the studio, they hire hundreds of, of uh, low riders cars. You know, they got us low riders on Woody Boulevard, right? So we shut down Woody Boulevard, and there was a girl high on some kind of drugs. And every time that the, the girl that does in, what's the uh, name of the girl that does in, uh -huh. every time she go, it's speed, she go, where, where, <laughs> where, <laughs> right? Uh -huh. And then another time, again on Woody Boulevard, one, one Chicana girl come running. My boyfriend just got shot. Just got shot. Is there a doctor in the house? Mm -hmm. Lady, what did he wants to do? We're making a movie here. Yeah. yeah. No doctor. Oh, no. <laughs> no doctor. No doctor. I also did a movie with a Cheech Marine in called, I would say a small part, not, nothing big, mm -hmm. called Born in East LA. Mm -hmm. And we went to Tijuana to shoot. And as we were filming, a car. <laughs> A station one pulls, pulls up, mm -hmm. and some bunch of men get up they, with no shoes, shooters, and they got machine guns. And I said to, I said to Cheech, you know, Cheech, is that the police? He said, let's pray they are. <laughs> oh, the set of collectors, right? I play a joke on Al Pacino. Uh, they were shooting in, in 116th Street, which is called Spanish Harlem in New York. Where do I and there's a bunch of kids watching, people watching, you know, the, the, the movie being shot. And there's a bunch of kids, right? About nine, ten years old, right? Mm -hmm. I say, hey guys, when Al Pacino walks by, say, Arika, Arika, which is a line from the movie Dog Day Afternoon, right? Remember, Arika. So when Pacino walks by, the kids go, Arika, Arika. 
Fascino sto. Uh-huh. How do you guys know that? You didn't see that movie. You're too young. <laughs> he told us to say that. <laughs> yes, it's like that. You know, we have fun. Yeah. Okay, Scarface. This is a really, really funny story. And because it happened, you know, sometimes what happened off camera can be much funnier than what happened, right? In front. Al Pacino had a big, was about to have a big party in his mansion in, in New York. He has a mansion at the time. And that, he said to me, he said to me, hey Angel, you know any of the real McCoy? Because he's a method actor, he likes to study people. You know any of the real McCoy? Which means, you know any of the real criminal? The one that Castro sent over in the 1980s? Uh, you know, through Mariel, Marielitos, they call it, Rio McCoy. I said, yeah, I know a couple. Oh, bring them over. I want to party in my house on Sunday. So I bring this Cuban guy named Pedro. Pedro, right? Mm-hmm. And that movie started on the house that day. Diane Kilton, uh, Christopher Walken, Joe Pesci, John Boyd, they were there, right? Well, half through the party, his security cut Pedro, robbing him in his bedroom. He was going through his drawing shit. And Pacino came up to me and said, Angel, why? I go, you asked for the real McCoy, didn't you? Okay, so the people want to know um, the cocaine used in Scarface. Was it real? What was it? Was it real? Well, I'll put it this way. The cocaine on camera was not real. A camera, very real. <laughs> <laughs> when, when she came in, put the, put the camera to her, okay? okay. Laura, yeah. come here for a second. You guys remember the movie Scarface when uh, Pacino's get married to, uh, to Elvira and we're walking down the hill to see the tiger. There's a girl with a pink dress walking. She, that was my date. Peach, peach, peach that's, dress. That's her. Peach dress. That was her. <laughs> oh, peach is the peach. That was her in the movie. Right? Yes. <laughs> so hold on. Here it is. Here I am in the peach dress right next to Angel. I played his girlfriend in the wedding scene and we were running to feed the tiger. Yeah. And then the tiger growled at us and we oh, all got we scared. We all ran back up the hill. We all jumped. We had to do that a couple of times that we were scared we of that tiger. <laughs> so the fans have been asking, is Al Pacino going to be in a higher power? Sweetheart, if we only have a budget for one bottle of wine, <laughs> what made you think Al Pacino is going to be in this movie? But then again, miracles can happen and she's not friend with him. I'm not talking to being the higher power, right? Yeah. And here's a here's a story of how I'm I involved I'm I'm involved with this project. About two years ago, my wife was sick. God bless her soul. She passed from cancer. I got a message from this cat, and it was a Facebook message and said, "Pachito, my name is such and such. This is that. I was this, and blah blah blah." And I read it, but at the time I was going through my personal issues, you know, health wise with my wife, so. I was like, all right, cool, I didn't think anything of it. Uh, flash forward two years later, uh, I've, been, I've been in contact with uh, this young, beautiful lady named Cristina Solis Caron, who played my girlfriend in Mi Vida Loca, Baby Doll. So we're talking, and about two weeks into our conversation, she sends me a text. She goes, hey, I need you to get with this person. I go, who? She goes, go to the real Mr. Homicide. He's doing this film with a lot of, you know, Chicano actors from the 80s and 90s, and we spoke, and he said he sent you a message before, and well, I have no clue. So I go, and I look him up, and I said, the real Mr. Homicide. When I saw the, when I saw him, I remember that I had seen a video of his, even before, oh no, after he sent me the, 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 the Facebook message two years ago. Didn't think about it, because he didn't tell me who he was, he just called me his real name. So then I look and, and I see this video about a year after that with my son. When I go, oh shit, I'm going through some old rap videos and whatnot. So here's this real Mr. Homicide with an AK. I'm like, this dude is crazy as shit. He's badass. The FBI gonna come looking for his ass because he's rolling no guns. So then that was said and done with. So Christina tells me about Mr. Homicide and I look him up and we, I sent him a message back. I said, listen, man, this is Panchito. I'm sorry. This is and that. Within a day, we started speaking again. Um, she told me about the project, he told me about the project, and, you know, you hear a lot of stuff sometimes from people, so, you know, everybody wants to do this, everybody wants to do it. There's heart coming from this kid, and, you know, and, and his his storyline is off the chain, like I mentioned before, so at the point is, my point is, things happen for a reason, you know, it could have been two years ago, and here we are two years later, 
and I, that's this is one of the reasons I'm on. We started speaking. He told me the storyline. Um, I've heard very good things about him from other friends of mine as well. And I'm like, you know what? Let's give this a shot. Let's see what happens. So that's where we're at, man. The real Mr. Homicide, Panchito Gomez, and Chivo, and Chi Chi, and Baby Doll, and Little Sleepy, and and Shadow, and whoever the hell needs to jump into this thing, yo, don't play, don't don't play around. Let's do this, and let's support. Action. Here we go. Uh, how's it going? My name is Jay Bird. I'm one of the founders and owners of Swap the Pomade. Um, Anthony actually invited us to be a part of the Higher Power movement and uh, super excited um, to be a part of this. I know. With our truck, Suavecito, this is um, playing out, you know, respect to maybe that loca and all the. Can I see that? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> paying respect to, um, you know, maybe that loca and, and Suavecito, the truck. I mean, it goes with the brand, it goes with the name, it just made sense. Like, why why wouldn't we? So, uh, well, we've talked about it for, for, for a while, for a few years now, and, and it's like Suavecito truck, Suavecito truck. So finally, we, we were able to. Reach out, Danny D. Beautiful paint, paintwork. Rods Customs um, did the hydraulics on the Z bar. So um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're glad to be part of this and be here to do this. What's up, homeboys and homegirls? I just got out the joint homes. I'm, I'm glad to fucking be in this movie with the real Mr. Homicide. This is a movie you ain't gonna want to miss seeing, home. Trust me, real gangsters, real OGs. Chivo included. Man, you're the you're the bomb, homie. Real Mr. Homicide. Got love and much love and respect for what you do. This movie's gonna come out big and thick. Check it out. Todo madre. Rascal right here. Uh, we're doing a little filming right here, a higher power right here in East LA. Uh, check out the movie when it comes out. Uh, Mr. Homicide right here doing his thing with me. It's gonna be dope. Check it out. What's up, man? This is Chemo. Rascal Dells. Right here in the body, kicking back homes. Waiting for the movie Higher Power to come out. Check that shit out. What's up, peoples? It's your boy Spider from Street Coach Chingones. Hey, check this out. I'm working on this project with Mr. Homicide, all right? It's called Higher Power. Make sure you guys watch this movie when it comes out. It's one. Of, I've worked on a lot of projects, big and small, and I'm going to tell you this is one of the most prolific films that's gonna come out so you guys gotta watch it stay tuned follow street coaching owners and mr homicide with the homie chi chi tamien hey what up what up my name is rich g rich garcia uh i'm a soul singer singer a soul singer that happens to be chicano so i guess you can call it chicano soul whatever you want i love soul music i got uh, a lot of music out i'm, I'm on I can't even count how many hooks I've done for various rappers, uh, including um, the biggest one, Easy E, of course. Uh, Kid Frost, who did a lot of stuff. Uh, Brownside, my main homies, the Brownside. We did a lot of good stuff for them. Gangster Life in the City and different jams like that. Uh, ALT, did a lot of hooks for ALT, Big Alvin. Uh, Slow pain, rest in peace. We did some good shit back in the days, tambien. And uh, I can, a few few others that I just can't think of. Barrio Boys, who sang with Selena. I, I wrote on their, I co-wrote on their first album and uh, helped them with vocal coaching, you know. I did a lot of stuff. Started, uh, thanks to Tony G, uh, DJ Tony G, uh, the original mix master. Who, uh, he's the one that put me on, you know, I had a homie go and introduce me to him and once he heard my little, little cheap little demos that I had, he was like, hey dog, let's give it a try, you know. And it was right around the time that he released Mentirosa with Mellow Man Ace. That's when I met him. And then shortly, I believe it was shortly after that is when he released La Raza with Kid Frost. And things blew up for us, you know, we were having a good time, we were making music and it was all good. And uh, I was going to sign with Sony Japan in around 94 through Easy e and Ruthless. And uh, I was two songs away from my uh, 
album being finished and when Easy e passed away, rest in peace Easy. thank you, you believed in me and you were ready to sign me and put me out. And I've always appreciated that about Easy e and we always give him love, uh, us at the Brown side, we always give him love and we always uh, honor his name, including my boy Tokes, who brought me back out after Easy died, I had to go get a Halle. Toker brought me back out. Uh, I was already jamming with my band, having a good time, but he brought me back out into the Brownside world again, and uh, we knocked out banging stories. I put out my album. You want to check it out? It's called Rich G Show Barrio Chronicles, and you know it's just stories from the hood, but musically, because yeah, I'm a singer. I'm not a rapper. Don't don't ask me to rap, because you're going to laugh. But uh, I like to sing, man, and uh, for some reason. I've been given that gift, so I just try to do the best I can with it and spread my love like that. You know what I'm saying? I recently started my own record company called Back to Back Records. I'm putting my own stuff out for, out for now, uh, but I do maybe want to eventually look at an artist coming up, young artist, because I do have an ear for good music and I have an ear for good talent. So um, we're looking into that in the future. Meanwhile, I'm working on my audio. Chronicles Volume 2 right now and we should be putting that out in uh, probably February and uh, just rolling with the music you know I'm not gonna like the homie used to say a toker we're gonna do it till the wheels fall off you know and then uh, maybe I'll go retire my little pad with a picket fence I don't know God willing I'm still around but the homie Mr. Homicide he's got something here a higher power He's got something there. Don't judge it. Don't judge it till you see it. And uh, he's a young homie that's coming up. He's a great rapper. And he was going to sign with us in Tokyo Tambien. And he was part of the, the Brownside Familia. So when he told me he was doing this movie, and, um, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not an actor. I'm a singer. And I'm a songwriter. And I'm a band leader. But I have acted before. I always play a bad guy in, at church church functions and stuff or whatever. I did pretty good. So I said, yeah, you know, I'll come down, dog. I'll do my best. You know, I'll help you out. You need me to help you out. It's all good. So um, we started doing it. And uh, next thing you know, he starts bringing on these real actors. So I feel honored to be here working, working alongside, working with Mr. Homicide, working alongside these real actors. And I hope I can fit in there okay. What's going on, my peoples? Panchito Gomez here from movies American Me, Selena, Mi Vida Loca. Oh, shit. Keep going and going, but we'll be here for hours. Anyway, I'll give you a little background on me. Um, I'm Puerto Rican. I was born by Amo, Puerto Rico. Grew up in Spanish Harlem and in the Bronx in New York. And in my early teen years, I mean, like 12, 13, we moved out to LA because I was out here doing a couple of movies. So I did my, my high school years in Burbank, California, which was, you know, predominantly in the Anglo area of, uh, of California. So it was kind of weird because, you know, I was like one of the only Hispanics there, but it was all good. So um, um, after many years of living here in L.A., I went to um, back to New York and did some work out there. And then I came back here later as an adult. And when I say here, I'm talking L.A. Um, since then, I've moved to uh, Florida. I raised my family and my beautiful wife and my kids. And now I'm a little more calm, you know, it's what they say when you go to Florida is, you know, when the people go to die and shit, you know, that's God's waiting room, but I still got plenty of time. Anyway, um, you know, you know, people ask me sometimes, oh, you know, they thought I was Mexican or if I was Puerto Rican, my mother's Ecuadorian, my dad's Puerto Rican. So without, with, with that said, um, you know, I grew up in all kinds of shit, you know, you, Puerto Rico's got its bad, you know, it's, it's got its ghettos, of course, New York, the Bronx, boogie down fucking Spanish Harlem and then in California you know so you know I got a little bit of everything I got a lot of street in me from different different places so um, you know people tell me sometimes oh you you know you, you're an actor and you play you know this tough guy but what do you know bitch don't try me <laughs> anyway um that's a little bit about me you know hopefully you know you guys uh, stay tuned for this film that we're doing the higher power myself Mr. Homicide Angel Salazar um, uh, Chivo from uh, Blood and Blood Out, amongst others from the Castle Mi Vida Loca. Um, this is a really, really, really interesting project that we're doing, and um, I'm hyped about it. And 
you know, let's go from, from there. You know, hopefully you guys will enjoy it once we get done with it. Uh, th this fool here, Mr. Homicide, wants me to tell you a little story. And it was funny because it came out of nowhere one day we were talking. Um, my friend and one of the co-stars, sorry, I got something in mind. One of the co-stars of um, a higher power, and Mr. Angel Salas, also known as Chi Chi from Scarface. Him and I did a movie, I want to say 78, 79, I can't remember what it was. But it was a movie called Walk Proud with Robbie Benson. So I want to say I was like 11 years old. I can't remember what, you know, what age Angel is, because you know, he says he's 24. He probably is 70, but he acts like he's 25. No, I'm kidding. Fuck with you, Angel. Anyway, one of my best friends. So we're doing this movie, and they were shooting up in this hill up by the airport in LA, and we're down in the bottom of this hill. And I'm 11 years old. My mom is upstairs, up in that mountain, in my dressing room, just chilling. And Angel had just bought this little Mustang, I think it was. It was, you know, used car, a little bit of yellow. It looked like a bumblebee. So, no, it was orange, I'm sorry. So, you know, me being a kid, I was like, yo, I was all excited. And he was excited. And I said, oh, let me drive, let me drive. And he goes, oh, what do you mean you want to drive? I said, yeah, I could drive. Oh, no, Pachito, you, you, you don't know how to drive, man. I said, yeah, yeah, I drive my father's car all the time. He goes, oh, okay, man. Well, fuck it, come on. So he puts me in the driver's seat, and I get in, and I just take off from the car, and it's going, you know, pretty pretty decent at first. So there's a turn that I had to negotiate with a curb and a mountain, like a side dirt. So I make this turn, and the fucking car just takes off. Boom, I hit the, the curb. I jump over it. Boom, I hit a little tree. Boom, I hit like the fucking dirt on the side of the mountain. Angel's panicking. What the fuck? Smoke's coming out the front of the car. We get out. He's running around like a chicken with his head cut. Con your man, Pachito. What the fuck, man? What the fuck are you? You crashed my car, man. And I'm like, yo, my bad. I'm sorry. And I'm scared because, you know, I'm 11 years old. So my dad and him were friends as well. My dad was at Scarface as well. He played the cook. God rest his soul, Mr. Cesar Cordova, my hero, my love, uh, my mentor, my everything. But anyway, Cesar and him were funny together. So Angel, back then we didn't have cell phones. So I don't know. How, I can't remember how, how it came about. So Angel comes up and he says, Joe, I got to talk to you, Cesar. In, in an Angel, in a, in a Chi Chi uh, accent, Cesar, I got to talk to you, man. And Cesar goes, Angel, what's up? Hey, Pachito, your son, he crashed my car. So he talks. And my father goes, Wait, 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 slow the fuck down. What are you talking about? He crashed your car. He goes, Yeah, I let him drive and he crashed my car. But you got to help me fix it. So my dad goes, rewind again, he, he, you let him drive, and he crashed. He goes, yeah, you're going to have to pay for it, Pachito, whatever. So my father goes, Angel, let me ask you a question. How old is Pachito? And he goes, what the fuck, man? Coño, 11 years old. I'm sitting there shitting bricks, so I'm thinking about getting, getting my ass kicked by my dad, too. So Cesar goes, my father, 11 years old. You let him drive your car? He goes, what the fuck were you thinking? He goes, I'm not paying for this shit. He goes, oh, man. I winded up keeping the car for like two weeks. Well, I did it. My dad did. They finally fixed this shit. Well, he got a new car and shit. But never again, bro. Okay, um, Panchito was 12 years old. I just bought a Mustang, a car Mustang. We were doing a movie called Walk Proud. And uh, he, he goes, can I drive your car? I go, sure. True story, guys. He, he pulled on the pedal, it goes straight for the world. He fucked up my car. I, I was pissed. I called his father. He go, yo, Cesar, your kid crushed my car. He go, Angel, let me ask you a question. How old is Panchito? I go, 12. He go, so why the fuck you let a 12 years old kid drive your car? <laughs> Even though, as an adult, Angel would never get in the car with me because he goes, no, man, last time I got in the car with you, you fucking crashed. I paid $2,000. Back then it was like fucking, you know, 6,000. But um, yeah, that was a story. He, he he reminds me of that shit all the time and he, and he, he talks about it. He's a funny dude, but that, yeah, it's a little tidbit. Anyway, he was doing a show in Vegas at the Dunes with, at the Comedy Store and it was him, Roseanne Barr, Louis Anderson, uh, uh, Sam Kennison, right? Sam Kennison, yeah. And what was the black guy's name on? Uh, Jimmy Walker? Jimmy Walker, Jimmy JJ. Walker, yeah. So my dad and I, my family, we went to Vegas, we're hanging out. And he had a way with my dad. My dad loved the shit out of him. 
So I was like maybe 20, maybe t probably like almost 21, but he had a grip on me, so I couldn't do shit. Like, I could be 30, my curfew was like 10 o'clock. So Angel convinced my dad, said, no, let him come out with me, you know, blah, 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 after the show. So he was, nah, I don't know, Angel. He said, no, he's gonna be okay, he's gonna be okay. I don't know how he did it. I wind up in this club with a bunch of older dudes. There was all kinds of shit, man, drugs, chicks. Blah, blah. Two o'clock in the morning, I said, Angel, I gotta go, bro. He goes, no, 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 don't worry about it, don't worry about it. My father comes out looking for us. He says, Angel, where's Panchito? He goes, oh shit, he's in the bathroom with a hooker. Yo, I got in so much trouble. <laughs> I was outside, I was already in the elevator going upstairs, but he covered for me, bro. It's funnier when he says it though. <laughs> we, we had a good time, man. Mm -hmm. The last time I performed at the Tropicana Casino in Vegas, my name is in the marquee, Angel Salazar at the Tropicana. I went gambling a few blocks away, and I was so fucked up, so drunk, I slept on, uh, on the bridge with, with some homeless. And uh, some people recognized me. They, they go, those bastards, they, they didn't give you room? Yeah, same time as the war came out. Yeah, like 78? Yeah, 78. Yeah. So we are in a nightclub in Vegas, right? And uh, you know how shit always get guys in trouble? Not you, you know, but... <laughs> And she said, oh, he, the big white boy touched my ass, whatever. And he said, yo, I'm gonna fight you, man. Let's go outside. And he had a lot of- He's a big motherfucker too. Yeah, he had more jewelry than Mr. T, let me tell you. <laughs> so go outside, start taking his jewelry, telling the white boy, hold on, hold on. Start taking shit. After half an hour, the white boy go, yo, I'm tired, I'm done. No more fight. Hey, Chi Chi, how much is Mr. Homicide paying you for this gig? How much I'm getting I pay? Muchachas, <laughs> homeboy, this is my pain. Get the actual figure of Mr. Homicide from the movie Higher Power, and me personally, me, Angel Salazar, Chichi from Escape, I'm going to autograph it. For 500 años, we've suffered the oppression of our people, but here, entre nosotros. Vamos a parar ese pinche desmadre. Porque esta tierra es de nosotros. Sangre por sangre. A higher power. Yeah. Yeah. We're here on the set, homes of a higher power. You know, racist, the racist film industry don't like to uh, hire a raza. They just straight up don't. There's a straight up discrimination towards our people, Chicanos, Mexicanos, all Latinos. We're from Central, South. You know what, but we're doing it on our own. So come check out our higher powers. Feed them, it's gonna be bad, eh? So uh, this is Pete Vasquez on the set for Higher Power. Al rato. Hey people, check this out, man. It's your boy Spider from Spider's Hood and Shrico Chingones out here with the homies, Peter, Sal, Rabbit, every, Mr. Homicide. Hey man, listen, check this out. This film right here, A Higher Power, is gonna be a the best, the next best blockbuster, man. Based on true events, you know, you got real actors here, you know what I'm saying, that live the life, you know what I'm saying? So where Hollywood could not get us, guess what? We're gonna make that ourselves happen, you know what I'm saying? It's time for everybody to come together and, and create these films and short films and, you know, whatever it is that you guys wanna do, you, we all gotta move together as a community and the film industry and make it happen because guess what? Get ready for my exclusive beer, 187 Barrio Pisto. I'm Mr. Homicide, so 187. Um, I don't drink, but I know a lot of people that do, so get ready for that. Don't get me fucked up on the streets, the price I pay. Don't get me fucked up, oh, I seek a bed. Hell yeah, got the last 187. Hey, what's up? 187 Pistol, our number one seller from Mr. Homicide. Better listen to my words like the burning bush. Demons rip apart your body, then your soul got soaked. What's up? It's Mr. Homicide. I got a message from Gigi and Scarlett. I don't usually drink beer, but when I do, I drink 187. Muchachas, 
What's going down, my people? My name is Panchito Gomez. I play Young Santana and American Me, amongst a bunch of other crazy stuff. But I am here for one thing and one thing only. I'm here to promote or promote, promote because it hasn't been out yet, and promote one of a kind beer, and it is the 187 Barrio Pisto, specifically made for Mr. Homicide, excuse me, the real Mr. Homicide, in this movie, The Higher Power, that we're filming right now. When this comes out, bro, let me tell you, I'm a beer drinker, this shit is the bomb. So support it, do what you can, 187 Barrio Pisto. I'm out here chilling with my homie, Mr. Homicide, the real Mr. Homicide. We're out here drinking the 187 Barrio Pisto. Go check him out. Bomb ass beer. Go check him out, dog. Yo, yo, what's cracking? This is Decoy Munoz. We're out here filming a movie with the real Mr. Homicide. Go check it out. We got some real Chicanos up in this movie. Uh, this is gonna be a real, real uh, chill movie. Go check it out. Real action movie. Uh, this is gonna be the real deal, man. Uh, shit that you don't see in Hollywood. You know what I mean? So go check it out. What's up everybody, this is the Puppet Master. Be on the lookout for the Higher Power movie. You already know. Camera rolling. It's crazy how much shit went down because of this truck. Right as it. So it's either him or us. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to, trying to cremate me, huh? He had all the little homies doing all his dirt. And said, ese pinche pedo sabes que no se vale, carnalito. That's why shit so fucked up out in the calles today, huh? He's dead. Ese diablo murió. What's up, G? Can we pull this off? Shit, we need it. So, so loud, man. 